All right, let's get started, everybody. Uh, so we're, this is the uh, webinar for the viral 1.3 release. Uh, we'll cover some of the changes that have happened recently uh, and also some of the changes that are included with viral 1.3 itself. So first, a quick overview of uh, viral itself. I know there are some people on the call uh, who are not current viral users. Um, so viral is a network orchestration virtualization platform. Uh, the idea is that uh, you can use viral to run network simulations, so you can create a topology graphically. Uh, you can configure that by hand or through uh, a, a automatic uh, configuration generation that we have in the product. There are some visualization tools that you can use to validate those configurations. And then once you launch that simulation, you can interact with it like it's a, a real topology. Even though it's running as a, as a simulation, you can log into the devices, run actual uh, network commands. The operating system source code, that's, the software that's running there is, the same, is uh, built from the same source code that we use at Cisco to build the, uh, the, the operating systems that you put onto real devices. So we have iOS V uh, and iOS XRV. We have a CSR1000V image, which is XE based. We have an XRV image and XOSV. So we have uh, ASAV firewall. There's, a, there's a, a set of virtual machines that are bundled and licensed in the product for use for running these network simulations to let you practice, learn, do what if scenarios. You can also take those uh, network simulations, even though that's a, a virtual network, you can punch that network out and connect to external uh, networks outside of the network simulation. So you can connect your network simulation to a real network or to a real piece of, of hardware in your lab. If you need to integrate or test something, you want to use that piece of hardware, but you want to have a simulated network that it's talking to. We've also uh, recently shown at Cisco Live how to integrate viral into a DevOps workflow for testing changes before they go live into production. We will probably be having a webinar on that uh, later, this, uh, later this year. If we have time at the end, uh, we will, most of the rest of the webinar is going to be really around uh, changes for viral 1.3. If we have time at the end, we will come back probably and spend a few more minutes just showing a little bit about the, the uh, user interface um, we'll also uh, paste some information in the chat window. Um, so there's a Q&A panel, of course, for, for asking questions to the panelists. We have some engineers from the viral team on uh, to, to answer questions uh, as we talk here. So feel free to ask questions there. Uh, the chat window, though, um, I will post the information about where to find some additional information about viral in case you want to go follow up after the, the, this uh, webinar. Uh, there's a tutorial there. There's some YouTube channels. Uh, so that information, if you've never used Viral before and you'd, you'd like to learn more, those are good resources to start with. Okay, so now we're going to get into uh, recent changes. Uh, one of the first things that uh, some people may have already noticed, a couple of weeks ago, um, the Viral uh, product has now been integrated into the Cisco Learning uh, Network Store. So you'll see that that's a screenshot of the actual product page on the Cisco Learning Network Store. It's still available in multiple distribution uh, formats, just like uh, always. You can go into uh, your account, the My Account there in the CLN store. Um, we're just integrating the, the functionality that we used to have in the, the viral.cisco.com store there. We brought it into the CLN store. There's no, no, no sense of having uh, two stores for, for, for this uh, product. So the CLN store should have, if you're an existing user, your, your current licenses. You can log on to the My Account in the CLN store and you should see your existing purchases, the licenses associated with them, and the download link, like always, that will take you to the software center. There you can download the different uh, installation formats. You, you, there's an OVA uh, for running viral on VMware, as usual, uh, both the PC OVA for running on VMware Workstation, Fusion, uh, VMware Player, and then also the ESXi uh, uh, OVA in, in case you're, you want to deploy onto a server with the ESXi installed. We also have an ISO image for bare metal installs if you don't want to install into a hypervisor. In general, that's um, a little bit uh, harder, I think, to do. It's a, a lot easier to just be able to, to deploy or re -wipe, uh, wipe and redeploy uh, OVAs onto to VMware, but for the folks who really like to run bare metal, you can certainly do that. You'll notice uh, one of the changes in viral 1.3 when you, when you go to the Software Center page. Uh, so the, the release right now is not public, I should mention. The, the release will be pushed out uh, later this afternoon. Um, so before we close the business today, we should have that release posted, uh, and you will see it uh, posted on the CLN forum. We'll have an announcement there on our social media channels, and then also if you, if you go into the CLN store at that point, into your My Account page, the downloads page would, would 
uh, then once we make that announcement, have the 1.3 release available. In the 1.3 release, you will see uh, one difference with the, with the uh, OVAs. We have um, both a 1-int and a 5-int OVA. The, uh, for existing viral users, you probably want to go ahead and just grab the 5-int OVA. Uh, that's, that's very similar to what we have today. It, it requires five NICs or virtual NICs uh, on the system so that you can do things like external connectivity. The, um, on the, the one in one is uh, specifically more for users who are downloading for the first time. Uh, this lets you deploy viral without having to set a VNIC, um, and then uh, it's a little bit faster, a little more streamlined if you don't need to use external connectivity right away. That's a, a much faster, or it's a slightly faster and easier deployment method. So if you're a brand new user to the viral, you've never deployed viral before on your machine, using the one-int will be a, a, a probably our recommended first step. After you've done the install, we can adjust afterward and add those NICs and, and, and expose the external connectivity. Just for the initial install, the one-int is, is a little more streamlined. We've done several changes here to try to make the installation process a, a little smoother. <clears throat> um, as usual, we, we have the OVAs out there. We will also be publishing the cluster images uh, as we have for the previous releases. Um, so let's get into the viral 1.3 content itself. So there's a bunch of changes in viral 1.3 that are really uh, infrastructure technology stack changes. So we, we want to be in a position where we can support this product longer term, uh, that we could also support all the latest uh, reference platforms being um, dis distributed by Cisco. Those changes include changes to the viral server itself. The Ubuntu release has been updated from 1404 to 1604. We've upgraded the version of OpenStack that, that we use to orchestrate the simulation. Uh, we've updated the KVM Kimu version to 2.5, and we've tested the uh, OVA operation on ESXi 6.5. So we've moved all those pieces up. To a large extent, that'll be invisible to you as a user. Uh, the functionality is largely the, is basically the same across those different versions. Uh, we have some reports from the alpha release. Depending upon your, your hardware, the Mitaka uh, worker pool setup might uh, permit the simulations to launch a little bit faster. But in general, the operation should be identical uh, despite all these changes. <clears throat> right, the VMI show we also have a new version there. Uh, it's in general, as always, recommend to download and grab the, the new version of VMI show whenever you install a, a version of, a uh, new version of Viral. Uh, going into the actual operation of the system, um, we've made one change here to the network transparency. So the connections in viral un in, in, under the hood actually use Linux bridges to connect uh, the different VMs together. In the past, those uh, Linux bridges were basically just doing a, a, a flooding each frame across the, those networks. In particular, the management network was seeing the traffic across all the devices. Uh, we found that the current releases of iOS XRC 9000 and NXOC 9000 uh, don't react well to that. There are some, some issues with those operating systems where they, they start flooding traffic when they, when they see those packets coming in. We've enabled now, we used to have this enabled, we're enabling it again, uh, address learning on those Linux bridges. So in viral 1.3, largely if you're just using viral to run normal simulations and you're not using NXOC 9000 or iOS XRV 9000 nodes, you probably not notice any difference here. The only um, feature that this would impact is if you're using SPAN. Um, but other than that, the, the behavior should be largely the same. Basically, the, the, the connections, will, the Linux bridges that connect will just learn that uh, the MAC addresses, after they see a certain number of packets come across, and they'll restrict that, that uh, packet receipt being sent to the individual nodes to only be the, the ones that that MAC address should see. Another one of the big changes, or another one of the big updates in Viral 1.3 uh, are the supported reference platforms. So we have a updates across multiple different reference platforms. Um, I think we have an update here to iOS, uh, iOS V uh, to a slight, um, actually iOS V might be the same. iOS V L2 certainly has been updated. There is a significant number of bug fixes there. In particular, iOS V L2 had in previous releases a lot of problems around multipath. Those so a lot of those bugs have been fixed. We expect most of those issues to have been resolved. So anything that was blocked on, on those features is, should now be 
uh, possible to simulate and, and run in your, your network simulations. Uh, we include also CSR 1000B 16.5.1. Many of our users have mentioned in the past, uh, we've, we, we were able to get a, a feature change through into CSR 1000V 16.5.1. If, you, if you've run into this problem in the past, you know about it. 16, uh, CSR 1000V 16.4 and earlier, the images that we include with viral are not, uh, don't require a license, an additional license, but because of that, they're also bandwidth capped. The bandwidth caps on the CSR 1000V used to be very small. Uh, on occasion, on, on certain topologies, the, just even the protocol feature traffic itself would overwhelm that bandwidth limit. So the topology, you'd see neighbors sort of dropping, coming and going, or, or the topology wouldn't, the network wouldn't really converge even before you start passing traffic. The 16.5.1 should fix that. We we now have a, a reasonable bandwidth cap that's been up, updated to one, meg, uh, one megabit per second. We expect that'll fix those issues. So, so anyone who's had run into those problems with the CSR 1000V, certainly check out the 1.3 release with the 16.5.1. You should now be able to, to use that and, and not hit these bandwidth problems that you were having with the earlier versions of CSR 1000V. The other thing that we're very excited about is the viral 1.3 1 does include built-in support for the NXOSV 9000. Um, this image is not currently bundled. Uh, but both the NXOS V9000 and the iOS XR V9000 are available in the UWM under the viral software page, like usual. You can go into that page, select the NXOS V9000, and, and click to install it. And once you do that, you'll want to go into the user interface and, and update your, your subtype list, like usual. Uh, that should be covered, I think, in the release notes. The NXOS V9000 release, uh, as we said in the past, we have an NXOS V, which is based on the 7K image. That has not really changed recently. The focus now is on, on doing the NXOS V9000 updates. <clears throat> As I said, the NXOS V9000 is available in, in the UWM software page. The uh, support for it should be out of the box. There shouldn't be anything special you need to do for viral 1.3 to support NXOS V9000. If you've looked at that NXOS V, you know there were certain feature limitations there. We've now got some of those working in, uh, in NXOS V9000. In particular, the release that's, that's available now with Viral 1.3 does have a VPC um, a feature support, except for, I think, um, EVPN. So, so there's still some active work going on there. Uh, the release will, will have posted the, the link to the release notes for NXOS V9000 so that you can go look at the full list of, of features that are currently supported or not supported on that, on that operating system. If you try the NXOS V9000, one of the earlier images on the Viral 1.2 release, uh, you'll know that it used to require eight megabits, uh, sorry, eight, uh, uh, eight gigabit, uh, yeah, eight gigabit RAM for each node. Uh, now that's been reduced. The new image can use eight gigabit, gigabit, uh, sorry, eight gigabytes of RAM, or if you set it by default now, it's going to set to four gigabytes of RAM. That will be, uh, it'll, it'll limit some of its, um, traffic tables and uh, disables uh, one set of features and everything else uh, behaves the same. So uh, you'll be able to run, as long as you don't need that set of separate feature set, should be able to run all of your NXOS V9000 with that uh, now smaller flavor that only takes four, big, uh, four uh, gigabytes per uh, NXOS V9000 node. Uh, the NXOS V9000 is not currently supported in the live visualization. We believe that should be fixed in the next maintenance release. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention on this list, uh, I know probably people have already asked on the chat, so I'll cover it here. The uh, IOL image is not currently included in viral. It will not be in 1.3. Uh, we did run into a bunch of problems around sort of Cisco internal governance and getting that, that rolled out. We have more recently, just before Cisco Live, uh, found the sort of right group that we need to work with to get all the proper approvals to get that out the door. So we're still working with them. Uh, we do not have an ETA on that yet, but at this point, it, it has gone from stalled to moving forward again. Uh, so we uh, hope to have something to announce there uh, later this year, uh, but we'll, we'll certainly try to be better about providing updates on, on where we are as that process comes through.